Fewer Webflow sites feel slow, you're not alone. And the worst part about it is that a slow website can be costing you a lot of money as a business. According to business.com, for every extra second it takes a site to load, response rates drop. A site that loads in one second has a 40% conversion rate, but at two seconds it drops to 34, and at three seconds it hits 29%. That's why in this video I'll show you exactly how to speed up your Webflow site in 2025 using the same optimization techniques we at Flowout have implemented from brands like Jasper, Sandlane and Clearbit. You'll learn how to identify what's slowing down your site, how to improve performance instantly with Webflow's built-in features, how to properly optimize fonts, scripts and images to boost load speeds, and the biggest UI UX mistakes that slow down Webflow sites and how to avoid them. Let's get started. First, identify what's slowing down your website. Before making any optimizations, you need to measure what's wrong with your website. If you don't know what's causing the problem, you won't know how to fix it. The best tools to analyze your website speed are Google Page Speed Insights, Lighthouse in Chrome DevTools, GT Metrics, and Ping Dom. You can use any of these, but at Flowout, we use Google Page Speed Insights. These are the most important core web vitals, measuring how healthy and user friendly your website is. Let's take a closer look. Largest Contentful Paint. It measures the time it takes for the largest visible content element on a web page to be fully displayed. This could be an image, video, or a block of text. LCP is considered to be the most critical one since it indicates how long users wait to see the most significant piece of content. Interaction to Next Paint. It measures a web page's responsiveness by quantifying the delay between a user interaction like a click or key press and the response or update to the page. A good score means that the website responds quickly to user interactions, which is an important aspect of user satisfaction. To provide a good user experience, Google recommends aiming for a score of less than 200 milliseconds. Cumulative layout shift. It measures the visual stability of a web page. It calculates how many unexpected layout shifts occur during the browsing experience disrupting the user. A good CLS score is 0.1 or lower, indicating minimal unexpected shifts. Using this and the other metrics is a great way to see what's keeping your website slow and then solve it with the next steps in this video. Just be sure to always run these tests in incognito mode to make sure your browser extensions aren't affecting the results and you identify the wrong problems. Second, turn on Webflow's built-in features for speed optimization. One of Webflow's biggest advantages is that it doesn't rely on heavy plugins like WordPress. But if you're not using its built-in speed optimization features, you're leaving performance on the table. Here are the Webflow features you can enable to improve website load speed instantly. And feel free to open up your own Webflow dashboard to follow along. Enable link preloading. This tells the browser to prioritize important content and speed up navigation. Lazy load images. This ensures that images off screen don't load until they are needed, improving initial page load speed. Use Webflow's image compression tool. This automatically converts images to next gen formats like WebP and EBIF, which are much smaller than PNGs or JPEGs. If you're not using these settings, go into Webflow right now and turn them on. Then move to step 3. Optimize images, fonts and scripts. The larger your images, the slower your site loads. Outside of the steps I already mentioned, you can fix that with a few additional steps. First, resize images before uploading so they are only as large as needed. Webflow also automatically optimizes these images and makes them responsive. So that's very useful, but keep in mind that the max upload limit is 4 megabytes. Even though Webflow has internal optimization, keeping images small before uploading it is the best way to do it anyways. Second, use SVGs for icons and vector-based graphics, because they scale infinitely without increasing file size. And third, avoid background images when possible, since they don't lazy load properly and that will also decrease initial website load speed, and therefore your conversions. When you've optimized your images, 
move to fonts. Fonts may seem small, but they can significantly impact load time. To optimize them, reduce the number of custom fonts. Stick to 1 to 3 fonts max to avoid unnecessary loading time and preload essential fonts that are critical for the first render, so they load faster. If you have a developer in the team, they can do that for you. Now, if your website still doesn't have the best performance after you've optimized both images and fonts, you might have an issue with website scripts. Scripts can be a major drag on performance and to optimize them, move all scripts to the footer so that you make sure your content loads before the scripts run. You can also use Google Tag Manager to delay third-party script loading. Or even better, if you have pages where certain scripts aren't needed, remove those unnecessary tracking scripts and that should improve performance. Step 4 is clean up unnecessary website elements. Even after deleting elements in your Webflow website, they might still be loading in the background because the elements and styles are still present on the backend. To delete those, manually remove unused styles and elements. Also, check for hidden images in your assets panel as they can still take up storage. It's also very useful to follow a structured style system like client first or beam naming convention to keep your site clean and efficient and also to avoid confusion in development or slowing down your site. Step 5 is optimized UI UX, optimization for speed. If you implement all of these steps and your website still isn't loading as fast as you want, you can also optimize the UX and UI to improve your load times. Overall, skip heavy carousals and sliders because these add unnecessary bulk and slow down pages. It's also a good idea to keep the hero section lightweight. Avoid using 4K videos or massive animations in the first section of your site. And lastly, use native Webflow video hosting instead of embedding YouTube or Vimeo, which slow down your site. Or you can also use platforms like Witzflow that optimize video playback specifically for Webflow sites and improve their performance. You can get Witzflow on the link below. Now, even if you have the fastest website on the planet, but your conversion rate on the site is low, you're going to have a hard time growing a business with that website. That's why in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use best practices that unicorns like Jasper use to increase conversions on the site and grow your business faster. See you in the next video.